Now, there is an editorial that I want to tackle. It's called, it's called A Constituency in Search of a Party. So the, I think the Starbuck News here, or people closely aligned, have, they live in a little bit of nos nostalgia about the era of the past and disappointment. They're very disappointed, they, some of the movers, because every party they've supported as a third force has shown that they're not, one, grounded in people's struggle, two, that they're corrupt and pr practically useless when they have had a chance to exercise power or be part of the power equation. And that is their experience. So I remember the early period of encouragement by the Starbuck News of the creation for the AFC. It was seen as a novel development. Two dissidents from the two party. Never mind they were the worst of the lot from the two party. And they were driven, in my view, by, by other interests apart from the people. Got together and formed the AFC. They never had people's concern as their primary objective. But they fooled the nation and many others, and they claim they're multi-ethnic. So first of all, it is amusing to hear President Ali this week declaring how he and other CARICOM leaders have consulted extensively with Asian civil society in their plan to stem what is nothing short of a resolution. Closer to home, there are still some citizens left who deeply care about such notions as equality, justice, and accountability, and then that they are being swept away. Civil society here has increasingly been marginalized. Now, what is civil society? Civil society is more than the GHRA, the Red Shred, it's more than TIGI and, and maybe the APA. You have religious organizations. They are members of the civil society. The government has worked closely with all of these communities. In fact, has supported them to ensure that our people can freely worship and they can do so with the support of the state while the state still maintains its secularity. And that has happened through in every period we've been in office on our, under our tenure. We, we have sought religious freedoms have been expanded under the PPP by the promotion of in, interfaith um, bodies, etc. I recall when I was president, we even offered a license for an interfaith channel that is a television channel that the state would have contributed to, to ensure that they can, uh, you know, people can to, um, worship and they can have access to media without it becoming too costly for, for the religious community. So that's civil society. Secondly, we have worked with the, with, the, um, with the private sector. Private sector is a member of civil society. It was all the private sector organizations, from the Miners Association to the Chambers of Commerce, etc., that represent large numbers of people. And notice the difference between these organizations is they represent large numbers of people. So the private sector commission represents people. The Chamber of Commerce, they represent large number of people. The Miners Association, the Forestry Association, etc., represent people. The ones that, it seems as though the, the Starbuck News definition of civil society and some others is your civil society if you criticize the government 
but not any government, only the PPP government. So your civil society, you get classified as civil society if you're critical of the government. This was in, in spite of the politicization of civil society. Look at the APA. The head of the APA was the deputy leader of APNU's list. How closer can you get? APA stayed quiet in the years that APNU has been in office in spite of all the abuse of indigenous people. They were quiet. So, but they're civil society. The a APA undermines the National Two Shows Council. Although it, it doesn't have, it's a Georgetown-based organization, it speaks on behalf of indigenous people, but hasn't been elected. The biggest civil society organization representing indigenous people is the National Two Shows Council, and they have legitimacy. But the APA stands above them. Now they can go and speak. They insist on free prior informed consent, but they will never go to the villages and get that from the people. So they want to kill the carbon credit deal. All the communities at a village meeting had to ag agree with the projects there. They got their money, but they now are trying to undermine it. So they violate basic principles. So they, they pol under the same politicization of civil society, we have seen already TIGI. TIGI, which is supposed to look out for corruption and submit report to Transparency Internationally Globally, falsified a report that they sent in the APNU period to say APNU had published the oil and gas contracts when it was a lie. They, we had to fight for that, civil society, all the media, etc., and the political organizations. Two, that they had strengthened the integrity commission when the fact of the matter is that three years under APNU, the preceding three years, they had stopped submitting statements to the integrity commission, so it was undermining it. And the third thing is that the p government stopped the parking meter, which was the government approved parking meter project for the city council. Falsification of the narrative in a, a hidden report that went to TI International, we would have never seen it had TI not republished the report. But their Transparency International in Guyana, we don't know what they say on our behalf, because they would never publish their the, the, the reports, the political reports that they send up. So that's civil society too. GHRA is another one. But so these are, and, and Red Thread is already, was the political arm, the women's arm of the WPA, a political party in the coalition. So these are the civil society organizations. You, I can name them. GHRA that get prominence, G, the TIGI, APA, um, Red Thread. Now, what's different about these organizations than the others that I talk about? A few individuals, unelected often, no regard for transparency. They don't have some of them audited statements. They don't account for the money that they collect. The money that they collect, well, as we saw with the APA, never ben reaches the beneficiaries, which are indig indigenous people. But Starbrook News, and, and I'm saying the media here in Guyana, will never put these organizations under scrutiny. GHRA is a one-man organization, and has been so for the past 30 years. But he gets more he could send a report abroad, and it gets recognized, and start working on editorial complaints about marginalization because we criticize the report. But you wouldn't get a report going from a, an, another NGO that deals with children that get the support of the government, 
that have seen increased support of the government, significant increases, they would never get the same attention. Or if the private sector commission sends a report, they'll never get it because, oh, they, they might be benign to the government. So this is what we're opposed to. It's one that your, the definition of civil society is the hostiles and who are politically connected. They've demonstrated political connections. They, that disqualifies them from being called a legitimate civil society organization. Two, they're unaccountable. Three, they try to undermine other organizations like the NTC, etc. Four, they, they're not transparent. They would never share their reports here. That is why I ask you to check if any of them submitted reports, because I suspect they would have submitted reports to the, to the convention too. So we are not opposed to civil society, just to come back to the editorial. We're not marginalizing. We're fighting these political organizations that masquerade under the guise of, of, of civil society organizations. They disguise themselves. And if anybody is fair, if the Starbuck News is fair, they would, they would put these organizations under greater scrutiny. But, but if you let Gao issue a statement, or the RPA, they would say PPP aligned uh, um, union, PPP aligned. If, if, they, if the Lincoln Lewis puts out a statement, they would never say APNU aligned, or he is at the, he, his union doesn't have membership. His union, I don't think he has a, any membership. He, he is the president of a union with zero membership, I think. I, I have to check it out. So, so this is the kind of narrative that we're opposed to. 